morning, everyone. Good Chaydesh. Chaydesh Menachem of the month that we comfort our Father in heaven. And he sees his children suffering. And at the same time, he could also end it in a split second. So we hope and pray that that happens any moment. Um, I saw something very interesting I want to share with you before we begin the class. And that is that the Rebbe said in a Fabrengen that according to Halacha, and many Rabbanim will paskin that if a person has an occupation that involves playing music and simcha dek things like maybe even photography or whatever it is that involves being at simchas, um, there's definitely a tatum for the person to play and to practice and everything else. So that ever said that to make a fabrengen during the nine days with singing and rejoicing, that's my job. So that ever said, that's my job. So I'm sure there are many Rabbanim who give a heter for such a thing. And if I bring, then he sang. It was a beautiful thing. Someone posted it on the group yesterday. So I just wanted to point it out. It's our job to be, if there is Hashem Simcha, to serve Hashem with joy. We're, ever, we're, we're, we're serving Hashem. We're Avadim of Hashem. So if you have to serve Hashem and serve Him with joy, that's the only way. If you, if you don't have the good, positive energy, there's no way to serve properly. Just like a soldier, if he's going into battle, they have to hear the sounds of the trumpets during the Gaza War. Remember, 2014, there were barbecues and uh, and bands and music and everything to get the soldiers motivated to fight. You can't be just sluggish and sad and miserable. Otherwise, it's not going to go very well. So we have to fight the War of Hashem. We have to be upbeat and positive. And for a moment, we think about Chedesh Av and the sad things that happen, but we can't let it uh, dictate our mood. We have to be positive and we have to fight that fight in the most upbeat manner. Ancient Israel, they, when they ask the soldiers, you have certain questions that you know, it's going to be on your mind that you're fighting. Did you, did you engage to a woman? Were you, did you have a, and they dismiss them if they were, question? yeah. They have to be happy, they have to be positive, yeah, they have to be clear minded. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay, now we're going to step into Perik. We're going to begin chapter 10, Perik Yud. In Tanya, we're on page 76 in the Chayenu. The overview of chapter 10 is another form of higher level of tshuva. Unlike Torah study, which originates above, flowing downward, that's where tshuva, the Torah comes from, from Hashem's will, the soul's reunion with divine in prayer is initiated from below. So we learn Torah, Torah comes from Hashem, but tefillah, davani, comes from us. It's a whole different level of unity with Hashem. So the theme of the previous chapter of Tshuva is how we find expression in connecting to Hashem spirit to spirit through studying Torah, giving staka, and acts of loving kindness. This higher level of Tshuva, the cleaving of spirit to spirit through the study of Torah and the performance of acts of kindness. This is, this comes as a downward flow from above to below. Neither Torah study nor acts of loving kindness elevate a person solely as a result of his own work comes from Hashem. He's aided from above. So that the word of Hashem shall actually be in one's mouth. And this too, oh, sorry, let me back up. Rather, he's aided from above to reach an infinity level, a higher level than he would have attained alone in order for the word of Hashem to be in one's mouth. And this too is a divine gift. I have placed my words in your mouth. So Torah study accomplishes much more than what man could attain on his own, specifically because it comes from directly from Hashem. Similarly, His right hand embraces me through man's acts of kindness. Her kindness is the supernal right arm. With every act of loving kindness, one draws down blessing from Hashem, and one is embraced by a far loftier level of holiness than he could possibly aspire to by his own spiritual service. However, that's wonderful to receive. You know, if a, if a kid's growing up and he's working a little bit, but his father's really paying him. He's, you know, your father's giving you extra money, even though you're really not doing much at the workplace. You know, you're working around the shop a little bit, but he's giving, huh? More than an allowance. He's giving you more than you deserve. Sort of an allowance. But then, what happens? You have to step it up. 
What happens if the father can't work anymore or he wants to retire? Now it's time for you to show that you can do it on your own. You have to start working from ground up. How do we accomplish this? Through cleaving to Hashem, through the heart's devotion during David. By the way, Steve, I'm a little jealous of you guys because when you lead the Amud, which I got to do today after many, many months, you know, usually somebody else, Nati, sometimes leads or Shkodesh, whatever. We only have one month one day a month, but we get to lead. And leading, you have a whole different level of kavana. You're focused, you're locked in, you say every word. And you're not. I'm sitting here, you get distracted, this and this, that. So thank you guys for the opportunity. Anyway, no, it was really, I, I, I felt a whole different dominant today. It was great. So when do you start connecting to Hashem from below to above? Particularly during the Shema and its blessings. By the way, I just want to say, although it's tough and you have to do it because you're saying Kaddish, take advantage because you don't get enough. For, once you're done, you're not going to want to go to the Amud. And I, I realized that davening for the Amud, you're really, you're leading the congregation. It's a big responsibility. But with the responsibility comes a great schos. And you're really locked in and elevating. The davening is so much more elevated. So in a way, it's a bracha in disguise. And you can also thank your parents for that. So, when you connect Hashem from below to above, you recite the words in perfect truth, saying in the Shema, you should love Hashem with all your heart and with all your soul. And likewise, these words, which I command you today, shall be upon your heart, and you shall speak of them. These words must truly be in his mouth, which in the case when one's mouth serves as a vessel for Hashem's words, I'm sorry, and there's no truth but Torah, and also to perform all the mitzvahs. When we say the bracha, you have commanded us today. It's not just commanded us today. You have sanctified us. You have made us holy. Thank you for the opportunity to do this mitzvah. When we say that under the chuppah, when someone says, when someone says, Hashem is sanctifying us, and we are sanctified by through and through the performance of whatever particular mitzvah we're saying a blessing on. So when a person says, a man says under the chuppah to the kala, the chasen to the kala, the, bride, the groom to the bride, you are sanctified unto me, separate from all, all others. So that's what we're saying when we say the bracha to Hashem. Bracha to Hashem, oiv, amo Yisrael. And this is the level of supernal holiness, which draws upon himself this holiness, this divine blessing through the performance of the mitzvahs. translates as holiness, but it also means separateness or apart or exclusivity or even transcendent. That cannot be contained within the created worlds. Since everything is considered as not before Hashem, relative to this transcendent level, the differing levels of spirituality of the various created beings are of no consequence. There's only Hashem, Hashem Echad, that's what we say in Shema. And rather, this level of holiness transcends the world, so to speak, from a peripheral manner, in a surrounding fashion. This is the level of the supreme will of Hashem. As we explained earlier in Tanya, chapter 46. After davening as well, we say to you, O Hashem, I lift my soul, referring to the initiative of worshiping below and raising his soul upwards towards his source, rather than just receiving the blessing automatically from Hashem. The Hainu, the Stabka, Rucha, Berucha, Kalayoim, so that through doing a mitzvah, not just the davening, but also through doing a mitzvah, spirit will cleave to spirit throughout the day. All this is brought about through meditation. When we meditate during davening, we think about the greatness of Hashem. Concentrating in the mind deeply during the two blessings which come 
immediately before Shema, and during the during the early stages of davening, Kol Pesukim the Zimra as it's known. So meditating in this fashion gives birth to a love of Hashem, which transcends into the study of Torah and the performance of the mitzvah. So it has to start with you. You have to do the first effort by davening in the morning. Then you learn Torah after davening, like we're doing now. So we reach out to Hashem, we start going up, and then Hashem comes down and meets us, starts bringing down the blessing. And this form of divine service is Tshuva Ilah. This is the higher level of Tshuva that takes the direction called Milamata Lamaila, from a below to above. And then later on, through Torah learning, we get from above to below, and also through Gimilas Chasadim. So it works this way upward from the initiative taken by the person who's davening, who elevates himself by on his own initiative. So the takeaway is this total reconnection to Hashem, which is the lower level of tshuva, returning the hey to Hashem, having Rachmanus on your soul, being bitter about your actions, thinking about the greatness of Hashem, davening and thinking about the oneness of Hashem, and then ultimately bringing down his blessings. Your Torah study begins with contemplation of the greatness of God, and then is expressed in all aspects of your life, in Torah, in tefillah, and of the fulfillment of the commandments. Everyone have a wonderful day, a good chaydesh, and may this month of Av be transformed immediately into a month of great joy with the coming of Mashiach, the rebuilding of the Beis Amigdash.